October 7th, 2001. The war on terror began as I was promised to September 11th. There was deployments in countries like Afghanistan, Iraq, Somalia and Syria. Every year since 2001, hundreds of thousands of migrants and refugees have taken part in tremendous journeys to get to Europe to escape from conflict from areas like the Middle East and Africa. So why has it taken the media 13 years to report about Europe's migrant crisis? Tonight, me, Ben and Harry are going to try to find out by digging out the facts and talking to people who have experienced Europe's migrant crisis. Europe's migrant crisis is packed with big facts. Between January and July of 2015, there were 340,000 migrants and refugees that tried to enter Europe. That is 60,000 more than the whole of 2014. During the whole of 2015, there were 1.3 million asylum applications into European countries. Around 180,000 of them were made in the first three months of 2015. 80% of all these applications went to the following five countries, Germany, Hungary, Italy, France and Sweden. The most common route into Europe is through the Mediterranean. In 2015 there were around 260,000 people who took part in this terrible route. Around 2,400 of them died on the route. We decided to start our investigation by going back to our old school to find out what the students know about the crisis. Are your parents from a different background? Yeah, they're both Turkish Cypriots and they're both Muslim. Uh, no, they're they're both basically from here, so yeah, we're yeah. not we're not very diverse as a family, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I think the furthest we go out is probably Scotland, or we had some Americans in America, but mm -hmm. yeah, we're we're unfortunately not that diverse in my inner family, I guess. Mm. Well, my mum's from Manchester and my dad's from London, so they're culturally quite different, yes, to each other. Yeah. Uh, they're both from different, yeah, backgrounds. Yeah. We come from a different country. Both from here. Yeah, my mum's South American and my dad's Jamaican. Yes, my dad. Well, both my parents are. My mum was born here, but my dad's from Guyana. Oh, okay. um, do you think cultural diffusion is a positive or negative factor? I think it's a positive factor. I think everybody should be mixing. Um, I think usually the diffusion of different cultural ideas and memes across the planet is a positive thing. That's, that's my view about the current state of British culture, I think. Um, I think this country has always been open to ideas and influences from around the world, perhaps partly because of our long colonial history. And in the main, those uh, ideas, notions, cuisines, habits of, mm -hmm. habits of mind from, from abroad have, have proven to be or proven to make a, a, a very positive contribution to British life? Oh, okay. I, I definitely think actually it's better to have as many different cultures as you possibly can all together because mm -hmm. um, there's lots to learn from it um, and it's, it's diversity which is everything I find stand for and it makes better because you know if you have just one kind of um, ethnicity or you know it's people tend to kind of be excluded. I think that's a good thing. I mean, you experience more of the world. Um, a positive thing, because um, it, there's not really much problem doing cultures mixing unless, like, you know, terrorists come over and, you know, want to be against Christians. It's horrible to each other, basically, and I think, actually, the more diverse a place is, the more you're understanding of different cultures and you're understanding how the world works better. So. Um, yeah, definitely for more, a, more of a multicultural society than not, is what oh, I'd yeah. say. Um, okay. Growing up, I, it, I had an experience where it was not very multicultural, um, and I think I suffered for it really because I had a lot of different views from those around me, and so that's mm -hmm. why I kind of live in London now because it's it is very diverse, and I'm much. I think it's both because people in their countries are suffering from 
say that she's much shorter than her time or stuff like that. And then they should come here because we have water, we have free education, jobs. But also no, because some of the people just use it, like ISIS, just to come over here and to bombs. Um, I think it's quite positive because then two different cultures can like, mix and kind of exchange their differences. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. What, what and then you can learn about each other. Yeah. Um, I think it's a positive thing. Why? Because if we get different people together, I think people will be able to socialise better and be able to find out about different people's ethnicities. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think cultural diffusion is a wonderful thing. Um, this country in particular would not be where it was had it not been for other people from different backgrounds coming into this country after the Second World War, um, when Britain was in a state um, because, of, because of the war and the First World War. It was as a result of thousands of um, immigrants from... Ah, what am I saying? Sorry. Um, it was as a result <laughs> of... Um, thousands of millions of people from the Commonwealth, people from mm -hmm. countries that Britain had colonised, who came here, yeah. who fought for this country and who helped to build up this country. Mm -hmm. um, and I know people personally, grandparents of mine, uncles that played a part yeah. in that and had that not happened, then Britain wouldn't be where it is today. Do you think we should allow more migrants and refugees into the UK? Um, it's hard to say because there's a lot of people in the UK already, but they're the actual like refugees and yeah. Uh, I think that they definitely need to be aided in some way or another. I'm not sure that Britain's in the best position to actually give the housing, jobs, etc. Um, but I don't think a blatant no is the answer either. Um, I think it needs to be looked into and they need to find some sort of compromise. Mm -hmm. This one's a tough one, isn't it? Because um, on one hand, I will definitely think we should re let refugees in because obviously the reason why they need to be coming into this country is because of horrible war situations and I think that's actually, actually acceptable. I think with migrants it's a slightly different issue because sometimes they're, they're here for kind of what the press make out as just, you know, scrounging money, which is actually absolutely incorrect um, and I think I'm, I'm kind of more on the fence that yes I think we should let them in but there should be kind of restrictions where that will go with that as well mm -hmm. um, but I do think there needs to be more regulations about um, and certainly within the press about how they're kind of reporting these things to mm -hmm. the people because I don't think people are clear enough about the difference between the two and mm -hmm. often it's you know, made it out to be quite negative about people needing to come into this country, but it shouldn't be like that. And that's not to say that there isn't negative stories out there. There's, 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 if there is enough housing kind of places, then yeah. But, but there's a problem with jobs. Yeah, no, there's not right. enough jobs for people already in the UK, mm -hmm. so it's kind of difficult. Yeah. Uh, I do, yes. I think that for a number of reasons. I think that we have a humanitarian obligation to deal with um, people whose lives have been made miserable partly by decisions that mm. we have voted for because our politicians are partly responsible for yeah. the crisis in the Middle East at the moment. Um, I think also that we need to um, consider carefully how we go about integrating people that we, that, that we take in. It might be that our present model of um, a sparse and scanty state which doesn't make particularly good um, provision necessarily for, for for people without resources. It does need revisiting. I'm actually not sure because um, I remember there was a refugee who was like in ISIS. I don't. Know, I think it's good and bad because they're escaping like poverty when we're here. Like we're surviving and they're like starving and dying. But then at the same time, we don't know why they're coming over here. Like they could be have a plan or something. So, like, I do think um, we definitely have a responsible responsibility to allow more migrants into the UK. Um, I mean, we were more than happy to drop bombs on these countries in the first place. And so when people are trying to flee such um, calamities, who are we to then tell them that they can't enter? I mean, we have, yeah. contrary to popular belief, we have more than enough space in this country. It's just about what we decide to invest in and what we don't mm. decide to invest in. If we are happy to put money into housing projects to build yeah. up homes um, and to build up spaces for people, then 
we would do that and that could really change people's lives but that isn't something that Britain has necessarily put at the top of its agenda yeah. at the moment. So. That's, that's true. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for coming, Miss. So I already know this, but there's some people out there who don't know this. When we made aware of the migrant crisis and how did you hear about it? Well, um, I like to keep abreast of world affairs and so I read the paper every day, I listen to the news a lot, I keep an eye on what's happening on the BBC website at a couple of points in the day. So I've been following the story since it began really, the current migrant crisis. At the start of the academic year, you did an assembly talking about the migrant crisis, specifically with Budapest train station. You said that you'd like to go there quite a bit during the six weeks holiday. With recently what's been happening with protests from the migrants, has this possibly changed your opinion? Are you probably against going to Budapest now? That's interesting. Um, the, the form that my holidays normally take is that my husband and I do sort of adult interrailing, so we go by train from place to place as, as, okay. the, mood, as the mood takes us. And it just so happens, because we really like Budapest, that we ended up in Budapest more often than not. And it's convenient okay. for mm. v v Vienna and Prague and other mm. attractive spots. And would the current crisis make me think mm. twice about going to Budapest? Yes, it would. I don't think mm. I would go. If I thought there were going to be huge standoffs between migrants and police at the mm. station or in the city, I would probably avoid it, to be honest. Mm. So, yes, it has made a difference. That's probably what I'd do as well. <laughs> so, let's say you're in their shoes. Let's say if you were a migrant or a refugee... Would you take part in the very long journeys they've gone in, like hiding underneath a lorry to get into Britain or paying a big amount of money, literally the massive the money you have, to go on a small cramped boat where you might not make the trip over the Mediterranean? I don't know. I'm not physically very brave, so I'm probably not likely to take any risks. It depends what the push factor is, doesn't it? If you want, if, if, you're, if you're going to die where you are... Well then, what's how do you measure the risk of perhaps dying on on the journey? The th apart from not being very brave physically, the thing that would bother me the most is being exploited. I think I I would have a natural reluctance to ending up in the position that so many of them are in, poor souls, which is mm. handing over money that they don't have or their life savings to people mm. who are going to treat them really badly mm. and put them at real risk. And one of the more mm. troubling news stories recently has been mm. about the, the amount of money that people are making out of pe mm. people trafficking. And that's really difficult. And if I had small ch children, oh, dear me, I don't know if I would. I'm always, mm. I, I suppose I'm sort of inclined to try and make mm. the best of, of, of where I am. It's really mm. hard to put yourself in their shoes. Do you think migrants and refugees should be treated in the same way? Or do you think one should have a priority compared to the other because there is a very significant difference between the two. I think that there is a significant difference between a refugee who is fleeing in danger of his or her life and what we've seemed to have taken to calling economic migrants. Um, I think that the uh, I think the position of the the you know, United Nations after the 20th century's wars uh, was very clear that refugees ought to be given priority. Do you feel sorry for the migrants and refugees or do you feel sorry for one of them and not so much for the other? Has your opinion changed because of the migrant crisis? Um, I feel very sorry for refugees. I do feel pity for refugees because if, you're, if your life is intolerable or your home's been bombed or you haven't got anywhere to go or you're in fear of your life, well then who, who wouldn't feel, feel so sorry for, for so, such a person? But I also feel sympathy for people who want a better life. If you're ambitious, if you're bright, if you're determined, why should the fact that your country is in a mess stand in the way of you or your children or your children's children? I do feel, mm. yeah. Do you think the media is being biased? It's because we usually see clips of migrants doing bad things, like back in September, the husband threw his wife and his six-year-old daughter onto the train tracks. And the news reported it like interrupting normal living, interrupting train times. But to be honest, we don't really see many clips of what they're running away from, why they're in different countries. But in my opinion, I haven't really seen much of why the migrants are running 
why the mines and refugees are running from their countries. So do you think they're hiding yes. certain clips? Well, probably. The, the, media, the media do what it takes. There's always editorial bias in the media, even in the most balanced. Um, and certainly in terms of the print media and newspaper websites, uh, well, then there is a bias, and the bias is anti-migrant. Mm. So for every story uh, which is about migrants inconveniencing normal life, there will be another 20 stories about the kinds of circumstances that they're fleeing from. So yes, we do need to be careful, and mm. we need to get some balanced input. I would recommend reading The New Internationalist as well as The Guardian. Mm. Okay. In December, Parliament decided to drop more bombs on Syria in the hoping of destroying Islamic State. So, do you think this is a big cause of the migrant crisis, or do you probably think something else like ISIS is causing the migrant crisis? Well, as part of one of my mega train journeys one year, I did actually go to Syria, to Syria um, mm. through Turkey by train. Uh, and the biggest problem with Syria at that point, which is only about four years ago, five years ago, uh, was Assad's complete mm. mismanagement yeah. of the country, which meant that they mm. didn't even have a functioning national grid. Mm. Um, and so that, combined with a very peculiar relationship with the outside world, meant mm. that Assad was um, uh, not the right leader for Syria, and it just shows how bizarre the world is that now things seem to be turning around in a circle where people are thinking that he would be better than the alternatives I think that Assad's mismanagement of Syria is the biggest mm. cause of the Syrian crisis and his willingness to bomb his own people into mm. submission. Yeah. Okay, just before you go, um, what would you say is the best way to resolve the migrant crisis? We want to know because we sent out a questionnaire before this interview who, and we asked what would be better. Would you rather take in more migrants or sort out the problems in their country? Around 66% of the people answered they'd rather sort out problems in their own country. So what do you think is best? Or do you probably have a different option? Um, I think, taken in the long view, that the response of the, of the British government has always been um, holding out a hand of, of, of welcome to refugees mm. and attempting through the use of international aid and development to mm. help countries get better. Um, I think in principle that's the right way forward to balance both of those. I don't know what a different option would be mm. and I don't, there's, it's always difficult to intervene in the internal affairs yeah. of another mm. country but then we balance that against our humanitarian mm. responsibility mm. to our fellow pe people. Mm. So we need to take in refugees Mm. And we also need to help people of people of mm. people of courage, people of honour, people mm. good people in their own countries to do the right thing when they're there. Right. Um, today we've just heard that we have um, we have a visitor who is a filmmaker, and his name is Peter Back, and he's going to give a talk in this room um, about the migrant crisis and the places he's been to where actually he's seen it. Um, so yeah, we will see if I, if I can get a few questions for him. Right, we weren't able to, to film because the cameras were not allowed inside, but he's told us to contact him the question, so that is good because uh, then we will get some answers soon. When you were at Tallis, you showed us a video of you going over to Lesbos. How long did you stay there for? I was in Lesbos for 16 days. During that time, how many migrants and refugees do you think landed there? Approximately there were 45,000. In January, the BBC said that Lesbos is a microcosm of Europe. Do you think this statement is unfair? It certainly is a microcosm in the sense that everyone is there on Lesbos. All the nationalities, if not all the people that we see in the camps or settlements or shelters further north in Europe, come through Lesbos and its like. However, swiftly, the people arriving on Lesbos travel through the island to the ferries laid onto Athens. However, one important change is the closing of the Greek Macedonian border over the past few days and the reception of the large metal fence and we have not yet seen the full implications of the gridlock of people suddenly growing on Greece. 
Have you ever been to any landing zones apart from Lesbos? I have only witnessed the arrivals by dinghies on this Scamia beach and people rescued from a capsized boat by the Greek Coast Guard who were brought in in the Moros on the island of Lesbos but I have always seen a luxury yacht for high-end migrants moored there at the island's capital harbour. There were some very strong facts in the video you showed us like how many refugees didn't know what to do next so do you feel sorry for migrants and refugees? I feel very sorry for anyone fleeing war, discrimination and poverty. It would be inhumane not to feel compassion for those people. But when you were at Talis talking to the students, NATO said they would set up their patrols. Do you think this has been effective? I have seen no evidence of this having any effect. One of the reasons we were told for a NATO Naples deployment was to catch the people smugglers. It is my experience that the people smugglers seldom over ever the cross the seas themselves. In fact, they actively order the refugees and migrants in most cases to pilot the boats alone. Often people with no experience of an outboard motor, let alone sometimes choppy seas. Do you seas. think the news channels are hiding certain clips of the crisis? Do you think they try to portray migrants and refugees in a negative way? I think many of the mainstream news organisations know what news reports they are looking for or when they shoot it. It is tempting to think they believe negative stories to have the greatest drama. Do you think the numerous bombing campaigns by countries like France, USA, Russia or the UK has had an effect? Yes. I think the bombings, particularly by Russia in support of Assad recently, have created an even greater rush for the border, especially from Aleppo to the nearby Turkish border. When did you migrate to the UK and why did you migrate to the UK? So I moved down to the UK in 2000 and basically we moved because um, there was a war going on in Sri Lanka at that time. And my parents felt like it was not They wanted to move out. They wanted to move out of Sri Lanka as quick as they as quick as they can. And secondly, they didn't they didn't think that it was a good place to like like for the children to grow up in because it is a third world country and there's not very much opportunities down Sri Lanka. So why the UK though? Um, I don't know. My dad just felt like UK was where you can get more opportunities. My, in my dad's mind, he had two options, either America or come to the UK. And I don't know, he, he chose the UK for some reason. I don't know, because we have, we have some uh, family over here. Maybe that was the reason, or I, I don't know myself. It was in his mind to come here. But nowadays, he always says, oh, we should go to like, America. Because I don't know, he just feels like the way they live is much better than here. That's what's in his mind. So it was your parents' decision that really took place? Yeah, yeah. Because again, you were quite young, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. What age? Um, I think I was about one or two. Do you remember most of the immigration process at that age? or? Uh, Any of it? No, no. Oh, well, I do remember my dad. My dad came here first. Yeah. He came here first. He got a job and he started to like earn some money. So that so when me and my mum and my sister came down, it was much easier for us. Right. So my dad came and he got his part. He got his UK passport first. Then he was work. He was working. He was working and he got some money. Saved up some money and so we can come and. Yeah, and she went from there, really. Hmm, interesting. Um, so, I mean, what was it... Do you remember when it, what, what it was like, especially with your family, like, how it went through? Like, was the process of immigrating over, here, over to here, like, really hard, or was it easy? Like, what was it like? Um, it was pretty easy for us, because um, in, our, in our background, we had a bit of... Um, 
we had a bit of English in us, so we had a bit of uh, Irish in us, in our background, and that, for some reason, made it easier to get a, a citizen here. Oh right, okay. That's that's. And it, well, it's 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 good that um, you have a, a a background of um, some sort of family background that relates to this country in particular. Um, yeah. So, uh, what are your views on the migrant crisis at the moment? I mean, to me personally, it doesn't affect me, but I think the good chance I help. Other people like they they like flew like they bleed, bleed from uh, like wars and terrible countries and all we can I mean all we can do is just help them and just get let them like help them get on their feet again just like let them enjoy life. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. Yeah, oh, I, mean, I, think... I get where they I get where they coming from. Like yeah, they fed, they fed from like countries where they had war. Like my family went through the same thing as well. So I get what they're going through. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are trying to help um, these refugees and stuff. Um, and um, I know in particular you're the, um, I believe, the church, because I know you're religious. Uh, you're, is it Hillsong? Uh, do they do any, um, do they support any yeah. of these? Yeah, Hillsong, uh, what they do is, um, so some of the migrants, they went up to um, Calais. Yeah. Mm, so Hillsong heard about that, and they took a uh, they took um and they took a bit of uh, action, and um, they so a couple of people from the church went down to Calais. They set up camp there, and they just built up they built uh, some tents up for the um, people. Built up like a massive tent, uh, like a mini school for the kids. And so yeah, and I mean hopefully, hopefully in the next few months I'll be going down there and hopefully. That's yeah. great. That is really People great. Yeah, I think they would appreciate that. That's really great. Um, so, I mean, what would you do if you were in that situation or if you had family over there um, in Sri Lanka that if they were, if they had that war again um, or if they were in that sort of crisis, like, what would you do if if you were in that situation with your family? Oh man, I mean, because I was young, if I was older at that time, I would have told my parents, like, let's get the hell out of it because it is not safe for us. Yeah. Let's just grab anything we need, the important stuff, like passports or, and money and clothes and just get the hell out of there. I mean, that's what will be running from my brain, but because we don't want to live in a world where there's war and there's terror and like no human being can live through that. Yeah. Uh, well, um, <clears throat> I mean, um, are you happy with where you are right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. Like, I found, like, it was, it was hard when I first came here when I went to primary school. Well, yeah. I got bullied a lot because they were like saying, oh yeah, go back to the country, we don't want you here. Yeah, because I, I mainly got bullied on the colour of my skin, like, and the way I talked to it because I had an accent. And, and from that, from like, I got bullied a lot from that, from that, uh, from the primary school. And when I just like, grow out a bit when I went to secondary school, it happened a bit there, but I just ignored it. It's like, you know what, I'm here, I'm going to stay here, so I might just like, enjoy life here. And it turned out great, you know. I met some really good friends, and I've got a really good family over here, and it's, it's good, it's going good. Would you ever go back to Sri Lanka anytime soon? Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, the war's, like, is long over, and, but they are, they are, like, gangs there. They are, like, a few major gangs, like, here and there, but, yeah, I will definitely, I will, we, my family go back there at least every two to three years to see our main family. So, um, I mm. think we might go this summer, I'm not sure yet, but let's see. Oh cool, well thank you very much Jason for your time. 
Um, it's really interesting to know and um, I really do support you in so, well, supporting other people that will refu refugees uh, within uh, this situation, this awful situation with the migrant crisis and everything. Um, and yeah, again, thank you for thank you for uh, your time. Thank you. Alright, that's good. That's good. Thank you for asking me these questions. You're welcome. Take care. Alright, take care. Bye bye. Bye. Hello, Heidi. Hi. Hi. Um, good evening. Thank you for for today and for this um, opportunity for me to be here. And um, I'm going to ask you a few questions about. Um, well, migration and the current migrant crisis, crisis that is happening today. Um, so, what was um, immigration like um, back in the days when you were younger that you remember? What was it like? Well, from my country, we know that there are people who are moving constantly, but it wasn't there. The, the hugeness of the number of migration which is going on now. So, you mm -hmm. know, people are moving, changing countries, they're seeking for better places or better way of living, mm -hmm. but it wasn't the crowds of people and millions of people moving about, mm. like it's nowadays. Were there more Europeans or were there more from, I don't know, overseas, like from Africa or Asia? Where or I was, where Hungary is. Uh, is that part of Europe is Central Europe? Um, even now, this is much uh, one culture and 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 one one race is white. Mm -hmm. So uh, the movement was in the, from what we know at that time. It was from East Eastern Europe to Western Europe, mm -hmm. seeking for better future. But it was uh, the same mm -hmm. Europe, culturally different country, different languages, but dif the same race. I should say. Mm -hmm. Was nice. It's more like the third world is move. Really yes. To come here. And well, you you are from Hungary originally, so what was the main reason you had to migrate from there and come here? Well, uh, I didn't have to, but we chose to. Uh, actually, my husband is a Ghanaian, so I had colored uh, family, mixed race children, and. As yeah. I just mentioned, the, that part of Europe is very wide. So mm -hmm. for my family and for the children, it was uh, lots of uncomfortable situations. It, because there were culturally, it's, it's one culture, so culturally, multicultural or, um, you, know, you know, that type of acceptance is not, not really there. Oh, it's no yes. flexibility yes. To, for different races, so there was lots of comments from the very beginning of my relationship with my husband and when the children were growing they always had the problem of the color like in a, in a classroom you are the only colored child and you always mm. have all sorts of problems because they mistreat you and I was a teacher and I know my colleagues mistreated my children so that was very difficult so uh, we, uh, I have been in England uh, 25 years ago uh, bringing children because I was teaching English bringing uh, students in an exchange program and then I saw the big difference because uh, even that time England was a multicultural uh, country. So I really wished to be come back with my family, but that was an impossibility that time. So we waited 25 years when European Union came about and England opened the borders first. Mm -hmm. So that was when we decided. Then I was 48 years old, yes. and my children were uh, the the last bunch because I have six children. The last bunch was uh, 13 and 11, mm -hmm. the triplets were 11, so that's what we decided with my husband, that we'd come and bring them all, and then later the, the bigger ones too, they joined in. And I guess um, the mindset back in the day in Hungary was different as well, Yeah. Um, yeah. especially about um, racism and, you know, cultural aspects as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and was it was it difficult to overcome it racism uh, you you cannot overcome racism because it's so strongly there so overcome the only way is over you constantly have conflict eastern europe to western europe mm -hmm. seeking for better future but it was uh, 
the same mm, yeah. you know, culturally different country, different languages, but dif- the same race, I should say. Mm-hmm. What's nice, it's more like the third world is move, really. Yes. To come and, well, you, you are from Hungary originally, so what was the main reason you had to migrate from there and come here? Well, uh, I didn't have to, but we chose to. Uh, actually, my husband is a Ghanaian, so I had colored uh, family, mixed race children, and as yeah. I just mentioned, the, that part of Europe is very wide. So, mm-hmm. for my family and for the children, it was uh, lots of uncomfortable situations. It, because there were culturally, it's, it's one culture, so culturally, multicultural or um, you know, you know that type of acceptance is not not really there. Oh it's no yes. flexibility yes. to for different races. So there was lots of comments from the very beginning of my relationship with my husband. And when the children were growing, they always had the problem of the color. Like in a in a classroom, you are the only color child, and you always mm. have all sorts of problems because they mistreat you. And I was a teacher, and I know my colleagues mistreat my children. So that was very difficult. So. Uh, well, uh, I have been in England uh, 25 years ago, uh, bringing children, because I was teaching English, bringing uh, students uh, in an exchange program, and then I saw the big difference, because uh, even that time England was a multicultural uh, country, so I really wished to b- come back with my family, but that was an impossibility that time, so we waited 25 years when the European Union came about and England opened the borders first. Mm-hmm. So that was when we decided, and I was 48 years old. Yes. And my children were uh, the, the last bunch, because I have six children. The last bunch was uh, 13 and 11, mm-hmm. the triplets were 11. So that's what we decided with my husband that we come and bring them all. And then later, the, the bigger ones too, they joined in. And I guess um, the mindset back in the day in Hungary was different as well. Yeah. Um, yeah especially about um, racism and, you know, cultural aspects as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and was it, was it difficult to overcome it, racism? Uh, you, you cannot overcome racism because it's so strongly there. So overcome the only way is over. You constantly have conflicts. I had conflicts. Uh, when my husband came to my workplace, uh, then it wasn't taking a week and I was out of job. Mm. So things like uh, neighbors, you know, constantly, every, mm-hmm. everywhere, they look at you, not looking as looking, but gazing in yes. an uncomfortable way. So from the very little young age, my children felt that there's something wrong with them, but there was nothing wrong with them. They were mm-hmm. beautiful, talented. As they are, yes. Nah, as they are, thank mm-hmm. you, you know them, <laughs> as young grown-ups now. But uh, th- that time too, there were many people were really commenting very bad. Uh, Really, verbal abuses. We got lots of uh, bad things. So yeah, it was it was very difficult, and and I really wish to give something different to the children. So that's why when the chance came, then we came over to England, and that was a totally different experience for all of them. They have opened up, mm. like finding your identity. Yes. Because they have seen lots of colored uh, uh, people, different cultures, and they felt very much accepted. I remember the first time they went to school. You know Milan, one of the triplets anyway, and they were 11 years old and he was telling me because he used to have lots of uh, uh, um, bullying and verbal abuse and other mm. things from teachers. Back in Hungary? Ch- yes, back in Hungary, yes. from teachers and from, from children and he was the darkest colored and he was telling me so worried and nervous, mom, I'm, I just hope I will have one colored child in our class. And he, they went to Kidbrook and the first day he came back, who's my mom? Most of my classmates are blacks and all my teachers are, it was so good. So <laughs> they have, you know, their self-confidence boomed up. Yes. So very short period of time, even when the language wasn't that good for them, they have to learn English because they, I was teaching English, but mm. the, the English was, in Hungary is not an English speaking country. We, yes. we speak German and uh, Russian from historical background. So we, not many people spoke English. And very soon as they pick up the language, after six months they have been, best students and they mm. were, they're doing well and I've seen them a big big change of confidence you know they found who they are they were because a mother and a, a father as a parent cannot 
you give a whole society background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can tell my child that I know that you are talented, I'm but they kept on saying, no, 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 everybody else says, no, 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 what is wrong, what is wrong, you know, that was mm -hmm. lots of uh, conflicts we had like that previously, and when we came here, then it was just very good for them. Yes, so you think it was a good decision to move yeah. out from definitely. Hungary, yeah, yeah, because um, that's, that's one of the main reasons, I think, um, people migrate to seek for a better life, yeah, and... Yeah. Especially when you have a family, yeah, yeah. Um, you will always want the best for them. For them yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so you would say that was it twenty five years ago that no, you to come to England. Of the first time I came to England with students in an oh yes, that so was twenty five years ago. We came to England ten years ago. Ten no? years ago. Yeah, they were eleven, and, and now they are twenty. Do Do you think it's been a big change for you and your family? Very big change, yeah. It yes. was, it was a um, well uh, in all levels. It was because you know when you are home, you know the culture, you know the system, you yes. know uh, uh, the ways how things move. Yes. And you come to another country, you don't start from zero. You go down to, I felt minus two hundred. <laughs> really, before you reach zero, you think mm -hmm. you are okay. Yeah. You start to be okay, yeah. and that's after two years. The first two years is very very difficult, very stressful because. You don't, don't, uh, don't understand the system, you know, mm -hmm. and things just don't work, you don't see it through, you don't know why or how, and you have to learn a lot, so that means this, you have to change a lot and that's painful. That's not easy and it's very painful. Financially to every house, before you find a job, before you know how to make a CV, we don't do those things. Now they do, around by now they should do, but many of the things we have been like 70 years back, mm -hmm. like human rights, like tolerance, like so yes. many things, what is in England, it was natural and I was very, very thankful and pleased that we are here. Mm. We have to learn lots of things and it was interesting, we, I, as we, 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 we stayed more and more time after the first two years, which is very difficult, you become, yourself, you become more patient, more, so you know, mm. all the boxes we had in our minds from my yes. culture and traditionally, it just drops. Yeah. And that you have a view on the world and it's uh -huh. totally different. Yeah, which that's is really good. That's true and I agree with that. Travelling gives you gives you more. I mean, it opens your mind yeah. and yeah. it's just yeah. um yeah, you you start to see the world differently. Different. You yeah. and your family of course because yeah. um it's it's when you've been through um tough things together and the fact that you had to to start from from zero and start yeah, a new yeah, life, yeah. Um, I think it's um, it's beneficial for the family as well in a way because yeah. it yeah. brings together the family. Yeah, definitely. Um, was was the language a barrier for you um, uh, when you first came we, here? No, uh, well, uh, because London, the part where we were, it was mm -hmm. most of the people who spoke Cockney, so you know I was teaching English for 15 years at home and I thought I, I have no problem with English yeah. but then you just come and throws that oops every situation mm. from banks to uh, workplaces to uh, many many times you open your ears and, and your eyes and everything try mm. to comprehend what's going on around you uh, but we used to speak English in between us with my husband mm -hmm. because but he's Ghanaian so the, the, the official language is English the, and the, the children had it but they didn't use it as much because Nobody else spoke English, only mom and dad. Yeah. But when we came here, then it, the whole world turned around and it was different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it is, it is interesting. It is interesting. You learn a lot, you change a lot. And when you go home, it's good to go home to visit. Yes, but that's always good. And I have good. two homes. Yes. It's very, very good. I, and I'm very pleased and thankful when I'm back to London. Yes. You know, it is like very good to visit because you have the old days there, but you see that we think differently. Our about you can say it, it feels like they are short-sighted mm -hmm. but you have you are thinking in a wider spectrum of the world since we are here so you feel comfortable you're fine but you don't think I don't think I could settle back you know and in Hungary yeah because there will be arguments they will not understand yeah why I'm thinking or why I'm doing or why it is different that, so that much of a difference. Um, now that well you you regularly come back to Hungary, right? Yeah. yeah how, how often do you come back? Um, uh, if I can, I go twice a year, but uh, if not, there are times when I go just once a year. So but definitely once I have to go because yes. I need that. I need that to recharge. Mm. 
with my yeah. culture. So when when you go, do you do you think it's changed much in terms of at home c cultural aspects or acceptance, rather? Mm, no. Is this no, is it still it the is, same? Uh, like I think ten when, years when a country mm, probably there are some changes officially, but uh, um, not really. No, not really. People don't change unless they have to change, and why would they? You know. Mm -hmm. So, and I see uh, less and less uh, colored people. So I didn't see. Well, there are lots of Chinese uh, uh, settled down in Hungary too, but uh, apart from Chinese, you don't see Indians. So you don't see all the the yeah. cultures you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's natural in London, for example. Mm -hmm. your, your neighborhood is is not not like that. So no, I, I would say it's not this. It's slow down now as the new migration crisis is coming. Mm -hmm. That's the force, and it's interesting because, kind of like you, pray for changes when I go home, and you feel that still no, it's not good for my it children. They don't want. Yes. I used to go home. They haven't for ten years. My children never came. So maybe now they are reaching the point that they might want to come to join me because they they had all those bad experiences when they are children. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, when I'm going alone, it's different than when I go with my colored children or with my black husband. It's yeah. totally different. Uh, I, uh, when I go alone, I'm at home. When I go with them, I'm never at home. Do you think there is a way to to help them? Or how, as indivi individuals, how yeah, yeah, how yeah, we yeah. could help them? Look, uh, um, uh, if, it is, if it is not... Uh, um, it is very, very difficult, isn't it? Because nobody really wants to leave the home. But mm -hmm. I think that the best thing would be not to make war. Yes. As, as naive as it sounds. Yes. Because if there was no war and people can live on their own places and they can't, mm -hmm. it is not racist. Um, for me, it was a reason because the reason was that uh, there was racism in the country and my family mm -hmm. was colored and we just went yeah. through things. You want to, we want that stopped. There are always reasons for you to yeah, to leave. To leave, yeah. Uh, but if there, if there is be, peace, yes. and, and most of the people from Syria, for example, mm -hmm. if there was no war and there was no background of nobody yeah. profiting from it, yes. they, they most of them they might not risk their, mm -hmm. their own life and the children's mm -hmm. life. It's a safer thing for me to get a plane ticket and fly through one and a half hours from Hungary mm -hmm. to England than to go through the sea. Mm -hmm. In a rubber boat, yes. and you you see your child running mm -hmm. when when the weather is like that. So and I understand many of the Italians do have the ships and they have, but the system you cannot pick everybody out. Mm -hmm. You know it is There's very very difficult. Thousands of people trying to save their lives. Yes, so yes, and you have ships of bringing, mm -hmm. and then and I don't I don't understand. On the other hand, is you always hear about uh, because because I think this that, that's the other thing that if it is. One one family, so it's n not never one one, isn't it? Because when European Union was, I know we're not the only Hungarian mm -hmm. families, and constantly there are people going to Germany or other countries where it's mm -hmm. easier, the language is easier for them. There's no language barrier, but there will be never an amount. What of people? How, many, how who gives the right to see anybody that mm -hmm. uh, no? I you stay where you are and you cannot come and mm -hmm. you don't have a chance because what, because of what? Yes. You know what I mean? We live in the same world and I think it should be fair for everyone. Yeah. It's not yeah. like, um, or there are countries and it shouldn't be seen as separate countries, you know. I know maybe uh, politicians would argue that or it would cost more money for them to come here, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because of money reasons, but... Um, Yes, I would you would you think that one of the main reasons that people migrate to other countries is because of the society itself? Do you know because you know there is racism, there there wars, there are many other issues yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that affects them, the society in the country, and that's yeah. why yeah. people yeah. On the migrate. Other hand, I think and the, there's yeah. also um. Econom yeah, the economy, economic reasons, economical yeah, reasons as yeah. well. That some countries, um, the government is just too bad that there are no jobs, yeah, and yeah, and the first thing you would think of is you and your family, and you would want the best for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, do you do you think there's a difference between a migrant and a refugee? Does 
I think the refugee is a more helpless situation. It's mm -hmm. a more helpless situation. Can you stop it for a moment? <laughs> <laughs>